So now we're gonna have the fourth one, right? Yeah, so this will be like the last one for this video, right? Okay! Generic intro into that goes, we're back with some more DB Simmer top villains of Dragon Ball. Today we're reacting to part three and four. I know we skipped over the Dragon Ball Super villains. That might be done after we're done with three, two, one, which will be next week's video. But you want to check out last week's video. It was the, I guess, 24 to 13. You want to check out that video? I'll leave it right there. Also, link down below in the description. Maybe I should make a playlist for DB Simmer. That way you can binge watch all of them because I know I upload a lot of videos. I think I'm going to upload like 17 videos this week. That's what I've been doing. My I've been doing like 17 videos a week, which is insane to think about. I said I would take a break and start focusing on the other channels, but I'm still focusing on the other channels and I'm still doing the same amount of videos because I'm absolutely insane. But I love hearing about DB Simber and I love ranking videos and tier lists and stuff like that. So it's really cool that I'm learning Dragon Ball and the characters through this. I've only ever seen Dragon Ball Z Bridge. Also, I'm showing my friend, my best friend Kirby, Helsing Ultimate Bridge. Episode one went live. You know, should check out that video. I'll leave it right up there. It's her very first bridge series ever. So definitely check that out. But I'm really excited to get into this. Shout out to the patrons. They get the videos day early. I'm excited to have a paywall on the channel because I couldn't do this without them. I'm here to make you smile, not make you pay though. So thank you, everybody. It's here, and I hope you're subscribed to all my future videos. Let's go ahead and jump on into 1227, and then we're going to get into 624. All right, this should be interesting. Also, I'm showing my best friend Kirby, Helsing Ultimate Bridge. She's never seen a bridge series ever. Okay? 12. Ever. It's great. What even is Pilaf? Is Pilaf. he a demon? A, a mutant? I think oh, he's a just dog. Pilaf, the impish little monster wait, boy with it? dreams oh, of wait, world no. domination. Emperor okay, Pilaf is the epitome of a gag villain. Perfect for oh, the intro. A I've only ever seen Dragon Ball Z bridge. And his companions Shu okay. and Mai. Oh my God! I just got that pun. God damn it, Toriyama. <laughs> are a batch of villainous well, schemers the on the hunt what? for the Dragon Balls in order to control the world. <laughs> but they aren't quite effective at their job. I'm pretty sure Team Rocket has had more long-term <laughs> success than these guys. They're That's hardly intimidating, they're wholly ineffectual, and their designation as villains is barely qualified they're, by they're, their overall motives and like some villains. questionable acts they put our heroes through. But that's not what earns them this spot on the list. They're incredibly memorable, ridiculously endearing, and much like <laughs> Team Rocket, they're a reliable source of comedy and charm. Oh, as Taka said, they were perfect for a series like Dragon Ball. Even their evolution into henchmen via King Piccolo works. As their own personal yeah. motivations adapt to this scenario and their own brand of comedy what has is to give levity of? to the demonic ruler as he needs it. You can't deny how funny and memorable these guys are as the original villains of the entire series. So while they may not really? be intimidating, effective, or have a deep, complex motive, they're perfect just the way they are. A little monster boy, a talking ninja dog, and a full-grown hmm. woman with way too much time on her hands. Clearly. Eleven. Huh. They got twelve, huh? And now for the exact f***ing opposite. Ow. He's the man. The myth. The guy who wears his job description on his Should back. We... He's Tao Pai Pai. Also known as Mercenary Tao. Him? While those I don't who think watched I've seen very little to none of Dragon Ball have had very little interaction with Tao. He was one of the most dangerous, intimidating, and effective villains in the entirety Whoa. of the original series. How did he even do With that? With the ability to throw a pillar and ride it at the speed of sound, use energy blasts so that fast. put the Kamehameha momentarily to shame, and kill men with his tongue, this Bro, contract what? assassin is a mean mother who ends up beating Goku in their first battle, nearly killing him. Well, While most of the other intimidating that villains stronger, in this series so. up until now followed strict orders, Tao Pai Pai acted with almost complete autonomy and had very little in the way of comedic relief. He is a cold-blooded <laughs> murderer, out for Goku's blood, and would stop at nothing. Until, you know, getting a grenade kicked in his face. It also helps Wait, that the actual battles between him and Goku are easily some of the best in the original run. And it's one of the first times hmm. you feel like Goku's life is really on the line. This pink ah, parading fine. ponytail packing professional puts prior prolificates to shame. Unfortunately, while he's effective at his tasks, his motivations are realistically low. As much, he doesn't quite earn a higher spot on the list. That being said, his first appearance as a villain in the series <sighs> is really remarkably wonder. effective, has to be number one. and he stands high as a classic where, of the franchise. Also, he comes back as a cyborg. Um, of course yeah, he does. Uh, not they love doing that. Quite nearly as cool as it should be. Do, uh, no, do you think it vibrates? I mean, what's the point if it doesn't? The tongue? Ten. The tongue. Jesus Christ. The Red Ribbon, Red Ribbon Army, Army. Yeah, as a whole? seen as a transitional <laughs> period for Dragon Ball. From being primarily about martial arts and adventure to more of a serial epic. This transition can be felt in the mixture of serious action and off-the-wall comedy that the a Red Ribbon Army war. provides. Led by the titular Commander Red, 
This private army's sole oh, purpose so is to track down and retrieve the seven Dragon Balls. They will uproot homes, destroy habitats, and murder men, women, and children for their goal. Collective villains oh, are rare in for Dragon some balls, Ball, huh? and the colorful cast, pun fully intended, that is employed by the Red Ribbon Army is a delight. Between I had never actually Silver's seen ice cold attitude, like the Ninja grow. Murasaki's utter incompetence as a ninja, and General Blue's divine mixture of effeminate comedy and deadly ability, Goku and his friends have a tough battle on yeah. their hands. They really Kid do Goku. cause no end of havoc One. for the heroes and all. civilians alike. So Goku's assault on Muscle Tower and Red Ribbon Headquarters is a fantastic series of guns. events, and it isn't until Staff Officer Black Man, and I thought the Black Ranger from Power Rangers was a little on the nose. Figures yeah, out the true no, motivation yeah. of his commander that things start to take a hilarious That's... and dark twist. And the Red Ribbon iconography is all over the Android Saga. Though that does yeah. little to actually influence their position on the list, it is good to recognize their contributions as a whole. It should be mentioned that most of these guys it's wouldn't like ranked as high on their own. But together, they're a fantastic antagonistic force for our heroes. And their arc that is one of the best Why in the franchise. And you can tie a ribbon on that. Nine. Nine. Okay, we're in top ten time. The Ginyu Force. Here we have one of the few villainous teams in the entire franchise, the Ginyu Force. Oh, Jesus. That was what, episode 20 of Dragon Ball Sea Bridge? Last entry, the video was like the Power blocked. Rangers. Here, we see a full on inspiration from the Japanese formula in full effect with a group of alien mercenaries that are as deadly as they are hilarious. Do I need to say I've never seen Power Rangers? Saga is known is for obvious? its high stakes drama, tension, and the longest five minutes known to man, this <laughs> gaggle of goofballs runs the gambit of abilities, strengths, and personalities. Gold the Dairy Dorks are made up of five milky members, each based off of dairy products. Ginyu is the oh, really? word for dairy. Goldo packs the protein with yogurto, or yogurt. The deadliest oh, combination yogurt. for your arteries are Jason Burger as cheese and butter, and Rikum is cream, aka cream. Are any oh. of these implicitly sexual to you? Goldo's ability to stop time by holding his no. breath is new to the franchise, but even this game breaking ability is pushed to the brink up against our heroes. Luckily, he pulls double duty with psychic powers that almost ends with the world's most kid unfriendly kebab. The fascinating thing about <laughs> these guys is how well they get along with each other and how lackadaisical they are with their job of, well, mm, murdering killing. folks. They yeah. Rochambeau to figure out killing order and who will be lucky enough to take up the task, which makes them terrifying when their powers are put into full effect. And these guys also oh. give Vegeta the biggest run for his money he's ever had. His battle with the rambunctious Wait, and really? Raccoon is a marvel, full of sweeping attacks and heavy hits. And the accuracy and precision so in fast. which Jace and Birder coordinate their attacks would have Birders, been a match like, for any other fast. character if Goku had not shown up in the nick of time. It's good he does, too. Every single one of the heroes on Namek is at death's door by the time Goku touches down. But when Ginyu himself shows off his power of switching bodies, mm -hmm. we have an evil Goku on our hands. Suck it, Which Black! Fine. These guys may be some of the most <laughs> hilarious Black. and threatening villains in the series, gracing us with marvelous poses, dazzling powers, and even more personality than you can handle. It's almost a shame that they're one undone here, isn't it? I take it back, Vegeta. Wait, are they, kill them what all. is that? Is that, is that GT? I think that's GT. I think I think that's GT. So we've already listed 16, 17, two homicidal 18? androids on this list, but here Not we have 16. the fresh young hip villains that would become the major threat. I remember when I thought seventeen well, was that's a girl. What Toriyama originally thought anyway. <laughs> yeah. Remember when we said that Toriyama's former editor Torishima told him that androids 19 and 20 weren't fit for the role of the big bads? Well, Toriyama then designed androids 17 and 18, mm -hmm. only to be told again by Torishima, wait, this time they're just some brats? Can you imagine yeah, what the twins. series would have been like if Toriyama never listened to his it's editors? Like and their total domination over the main cast doesn't stop there. They manhandle every fighter who steps up to them, leading Broke to Vegeta's one of the most one-sided fights Vegeta has ever fought. And that's saying a lot for a guy whose major role in the series is make everything worse, then job as hard as possible. Jesus, spoilers, Kaiser. Android 16, 17, and 18 are exceptionally different from the rest of the villains who made the list. From their piercing cold stares, their consistently casual demeanor, to their relationship foreheads. with one another, and the motivation that drives them towards Goku. They don't feel like traditional Dragon Ball villains. Their youth alone makes them stand out, but the way they talk and interact with others gives them this unnerving aura that belies just how deadly they are. And boy, are they deadly. I enjoy in flashbacks them. Flashbacks in, in the bridge. Trunks, we see them murder every member of the main cast, with the exception yep. of non combatants such as Chi Chi and Bulma, leaving only Trunks to save the day. For all intents and purposes, God, these trunks. guys won in another timeline. Well, yeah. until Trunks finally came back after Cell. Their character arcs are also some of the best in the series. 
While the androids of Trunk's future are murderous and unrepentant, Android 16 provides an unintentional moral compass that keeps his two siblings from stepping too far out of line. Besides their somewhat minor infractions, he also slowly learns to love the planet around him. And he ends up sacrificing himself on multiple occasions to protect it, being part of the most powerful oh, moments the in birds. Dragon Ball. The points against Dude, these guys are so largely good. that the personalities are go back and a little it. flat. Well, their development and their casual attitudes work well to sell their intimidating and dangerous nature, they sometimes come off as too subdued. Furthermore, the role in the series is downplayed by the bigger threat that follows. But so. all that aside, they're a great trio who I'd have loved to see get more development. Hint, hint. It really is magical to see Android mm -hmm. 16 become more of his own character as time goes on, and also to see Android 18's development after the Cell Saga. While Android 17's wife, I think? The series is one of the very best fights in the franchise, his actual development is, well, almost non-existent. But his sister, Android 18, ends up falling for series veteran Krillin. Of course, the downside to this is Toriyama <laughs> making another strong female character and putting a baby in her for the sake of keeping the status quo, but at least she's yeah. still a badass mama. So, are we going to talk about how they're not Android androids? Well. They're, how they're actually modified humans? Cyborgs. A.K.A. cyborgs? Well, yeah. what about Jinzo Ningen? Hey, Kaiser. Don't be a f***ing weeb, Lanny. What? What? Who's that? Seven. Where is Cell going to be? Some people have Piccolo a Jr. lives that they try to fill by having children. Unfortunately for Is that the Piccolo, Piccolo we know? There's no yeah. filling the hole that Goku left. But his <laughs> offspring slash reincarnation yeah. has every intention of following up on his tyrannical papa's wishes for world domination. And more importantly, killing Son Goku. It should be set up yeah, that Piccolo is to one that. of the best characters in the series, but his role as a villain is short-lived. But whoa boy, is it a crazy run. Surely after being expelled... They completely from skipped Piccolo's that stomach, the abridged. Uh, chest? Throat? Seriously, where does huh? he come from? There's a hole the size of a 14-year-old in his abdomen. Anyway, he hatches to reveal a demon baby who is quick to explore the new world around him. Fast forward and to the 23rd Tenkaichi Budokai tournament, and he makes his first appearance as an adult. At first glance, his green skin and devilish grin give him away as the Demon King himself, but it's pretty apparent that this Piccolo is his own Namekian. Well, not yeah, Namekian. Yeah, different. I mean, he is, just not yet. Under the guise of Junior, he enters the tournament with his eyes set on killing Goku, making his way up the ladder to do so. With an air of okay. mystery and menace, the audience is slowly exposed to this new incarnation of the Demon King. How long was he a villain for? But also less for also, if he's a villain, that means Vegeta is definitely a villain. adopts his own set of ethics and moral code. Well, with the exception of the whole murdering Goku thing, but what's an evil demon space alien gonna do? Through his fights are, with both Krillin who's and gonna Kami, be the next under video? the guise of Shen or Hiro, depending on your dub, we see shades of his villainy. However, it isn't until the climactic final battle with Goku where we see him come to full fruition as a violent, unyielding monster. He pushes Goku Slug. to the absolute limit in one of the most drag-out, visceral, and exhausting fights in the entire franchise. The techniques hmm. and combat prowess on display here run the gamut, from flying to blast to Piccolo's growing ability to a Kamehameha Wait, from the he feet. Grew. Oh it yeah. Fights from the, the feet. Wait, from the feet. Ball has to offer on display with Didn't wonderful do that. animation, choreography, and just. Oh, I gotta watch it again. While Kaiser is busy digging out his. Never seen rips, that. Let's take a minute to recap the fights before Goku. Piccolo's appearance is a chance for both Kami to come to the forefront as a character in the story, as well as for Krillin to get one of the most satisfying fights the poor little monk gets in the entire show. Surprising He's like both the strongest the human. And the demon. Prince? His battle with Kami also allows us to get a peek into the true nature of Namekians. While it's not explicit, they have a conversation in a language that's distinctly what? alien. Though neither of them Wait, would realize huh? this until later in the story. It's one of the few bits of foreshadowing within the series what? and really adds depth to the story. Also, Wait, Piccolo manages to Kami? reflect the evil containment wave, or Mafuba, again, depending on your dub, in a turn that propels the stakes of the tournament, leading us huh? to the climax. But what's interesting about Piccolo Jr. is how he develops after his loss. See, most other villains within the series don't they really get... have much to do after they're defeated. Mostly because, well, they're you dead. Lost. This time, however, True. Goku makes a conscious effort to spare Piccolo, even providing him the means of recovery via Senzu. And then, so he does that a lot. Get stronger, as so they may also, this shirt is purple. Again, Fight me. Which then becomes kind of a trend for Goku, for better or worse. But it's this act of mercy that allows us to see Piccolo develop from a villain with a laser focus of killing Goku 
into two, what would be a steadfast, ally. invaluable member of Goku's entourage. Yeah. Piccolo joins forces with Goku to defeat Raditz. Yeah, Temporarily Raditz, yeah. He adopts Gohan and even sacrifices his life for the whiny little squirt, giving us a true redemption in Dragon Ball. And it's a beautiful thing. We don't see a story as complex once more, but, well, we'll get to him soon. Let it be known, by the way, that Wait. I thought Piccolo Jr. Vegeta? and King Piccolo should have been one entry. I, I, I respect your input, I value it, and I disagree with it. I hear your disagreement, I acknowledge it, and you're wrong. When General Rildo. Who? Oh? Okay, so that was the first one. Now we're getting to the next one. Next week should be the top three. Frieza, Frieza has to be number one. It has to be number one. Like, 100% has to be Frieza number one. Vegeta, probably. I don't know where Cell's gonna be. You might see Cell in this one. And whoever's not in this one is Six. gonna be the top three. Wait, Boo didn't make Boo? the five? Salt oh, he wasn't a thing. I thought it would be like fourth Sorry, or guys. something. With the number of mighty villains in Dragon Ball, someone had to be left out of the top five. People love Boo. Unfortunately, Boo Boot just doesn't gut it. It all comes down to the fact that while he's certainly not a bad villain, he can just be kind of boring. And the worst part is <laughs> that he doesn't start out that way at all. When Boo's first revealed with his wow, I did not expect him to be voice, blind, towards the beginning that he of this is, video. It's incredibly unsettling. The entire cast is caught off guard by his appearance, and that alone helps sell how terrifying he truly is. And terrifying doesn't even begin to describe it. In a quest for universal uh, domination, the evil alien wizard Bibbidi summoned to Bibbidi, his aid yeah. the Majin Buu. With his power, they mercilessly slaughtered four of the five Supreme Kais who protected the universe. Is that where even absorbing one of them in his Tintashion got nearly eliminated his hairstyle Earth. from? It was thanks from to the Eastern Boo. Supreme Kai that Bibbidi was destroyed and Boo left sealed away for eternity. Or at least would have if not for his doppelganger slash son Bobbidi who employs the king of the demon realm to restore the pink punisher to full power. Crashing the world martial arts tournament oh. to do so and setting up a chain of events that would push the entire universe to the brink. And there are a lot of things that separate is that, is that some from, his villains, from his concept to his motives to his overall design. His bubblegum color scheme mixed with an Arabian genie aesthetic all on its own would be enough to fully separate him. Why is he here, Vince? But his jolly attitude and rotund shape are just disarming. He's essentially a child given superpowers. They Kirby. Well, sweets extends as far as to turn people into literal candy and, and devour them. them on a bender to end all humanity. He wants very little more than pure pleasure, finding oh. both delight in pastries and wanton destruction of a city-wide I have a food reaction game. channel. The best traits about Boo so far, as we've listed, mostly continue through his initial transformation. Though he loses his disarming jolly exterior, his chaotic nature and lust for personal satisfaction at the cost of lives stays true. Super Boo starts off as the next That's logical step Boo, right? in Boo's evolution, from He's chaotic insane. neutral to chaotic evil. He now has one true goal in mind, a fighter that will satisfy his needs for battle. Which actually makes him a fantastic parallel to Goku, a man who hungers for food and battle, sometimes over the better interest of those around him. Unfortunately, Which is, okay. this is never really explored within the series itself, but from a meta perspective, Goku it's wants a to fight. Boo that definitely makes him unique. Uh, before his absorption of Piccolo and Gotenks, and we're left with a blander, perfect cell. <laughs> and there's where we come to the oh, crux no. of the problem with Majin Buu. His chaotic nature and unkillable form makes for an unbelievable force to be reckoned with. But with each evolution, he merely grows less turquoise? interesting. What started as a unique and Teal? unsettling villain turns into yet another run of the mill arrogant bad guy with the destruction as his only goal. Until we're treated with the Wait, final. Wait, did he just switch in the cell there? Known as Kid Boo or Pure Boo if you're a purist. The epitome of chaotic evil within the series. His only concept is death and destruction on a cosmic scale, and in one I mean, Kid Boo is we return to the best parts of Boo. Except not really. Unfortunately, by the time we reach Pure Boo, we've exhausted the saga as a whole. At a whopping How long six last? chapters and episodes dedicated entirely to Majin Boo, the most interesting parts of his character have been explored, pink lightning. abandoned, then scrambled back together haphazardly, only to leave us cheering Goku's spirit bomb on, not to save the universe, but to Just save to us from it. the story dragging out any longer. How many All episodes the from was the Boo saga? On the part of Toriyama as well as rumors of audience backlash over the direction of the story. Toriyama has never been a stranger to writing by the seat of his pants, and it only becomes more apparent as the series goes on. While the rewrites of the Android and Cell arcs ultimately came together... Hey, uh, Cell! God, we're gonna get to per we're perfect Cell. problems, and they really do drag Boo and his whole saga down as a whole. All that being said, we still love Boo. If these deficiencies in his character were only less glaring, perhaps he'd be in our top three. 
You know, we didn't mm. even discuss my favorite part of Boo. His relationship what? with Satan. Oh, it's yeah. Such a precious friendship. It comes that. completely out of nowhere. He really does help with Satan's character arc, huh? Something I Which never weird, thought I wanted. Satan's still but around. After it was said and done, I'm so happy was part of the series. Yeah, actually. And Boo in the supporting cast definitely opens up possibilities for some interesting character moments. Speaking mm. of which, birds. Well, 16. let's just say get ready for number five. What's number five? Five. Okay. Beerus. Okay. Taka, it's your line. You put a movie villain in the top five. Well, he's not just a movie villain. You're right. He's a movie villain post GT. As we've said plenty of times so far, those also of you who are in the December know that Battle of Gods ranked as That's our Weiss. number one Dragon Weiss? Ball film. Please. Oh, uh, Weiss is a spoilers, movie character. I guess. So you're probably already aware that we have an affinity for the purring purple god of destruction, Beerus. As previously stated in our Super Who Villains entry, planet, we're not greasy. including Beerus's character moments from Super. This is just Battle of Gods Beerus alone. So with that out of the way, Whoa. Beerus oh, that was is a good movie. fucking amazing, and if you disagree with that fact, then you're wrong and probably hate Dragon Ball. Mic drop. Well, I'm not oh. actually going to drop the mic. It's really expensive. What Lanny yeah, is trying to I say understand. is our selection of Beerus to be in the top five had plenty of contributing factors. We're collectively huge fans of his concept. His design is wonderfully unique and full of character. His motivation he was like the one, him and Goku were the only two personality Japan characters I knew before fun. the abridged. Beerus is a delight. From the moment he awakes from his 39 year long nap to his final moments trying Wasabi for the first time, we're treated to a full on <laughs> cartoon character made god of destruction. His expressions are big, his moods are extreme, and his power is overwhelming. He He's a god. for an antagonist with more charm and character than any other movie villain combined. Now, you'll notice Kaiser said antagonist. As alluded to in the supervillains entry, he's not really a villain, but more a force of conflict kind of for there. Goku and friends to overcome. But considering his penchant for wholesale genocide and destruction, regardless of whether or not it's his god-given duty, he's really not a good guy. At least not in the majority of the film. He's more comfortable with wiping the earth and its inhabitants from existence over That's the easier. smallest infraction. Including but not limited to not having a conversation with a planet. Boo is a stingy dick. And his characteristic of supreme childishness could easily come off as irritating if it weren't for the way that Beerus carries himself. He's a form of authority, millions of years old and far more powerful yeah. than the entirety of the canon before and after him. With yeah, the exception he's of his attendant Weiss, but we'll get to him. He can come off as effortlessly Weiss cool and yet oh, wildly childish at the flip Count. of a switch. And it all just works. But what's even more impressive than his personality is the concept. With creation, first must come destruction. I.e., he's the guy who demolishes the old gas station in Uptown so they can put in that bitch in Artisan Pizza Shop. It's his job to wipe away the old so new life can emerge. As guess, such, he's got a destruction, he's yeah. justified in his actions of destruction. Well, to a point, anyway. It's really a moral gray area with Beerus, and that's why he works so well as an antagonist. You know Goku has to win to save the planet, but this is the duty yeah, of, of a god who has outlived him hundreds of thousands of times over. What could have been a boring story about an evil god doing evil things becomes a complex and thrilling romp that expands the lore of the universe. Also, Whis It's is harder to make a character like him treat. than just a villain. His majestic, refined, yet totally laid back and casual nature goes hand in hand with his foodie personality. He's just here for the food. Oh, and uh, draw <laughs> line time if Beerus goes too food. bonkers. And when you find out just how powerful he is, he, the context ridiculous. of his relationship with Beerus, as well as with the rest of the cast, is brought into a whole new light. And the mystery of Whis is both endearing and exciting. Though People told me he doesn't play his around. Ability to turn back time. This leads us to Resurrection F. We won't talk about it much here. Was that a movie? Yeah, it was a movie. They hardly count as antagonists, much less villains. But the film really does just waste them in the second half of the film. However, Whis as a teacher for both Vegeta and Goku is a turn that works perfectly. Fights both in at the same time. Dedicated to that, thank you very much. Beerus, on the other hand, oh, has no place that. in the film and actually actively hurts it by being present in some of the bigger scenes. It sucks away all the tension when you know that someone that outranks both Goku and Frieza is just sitting is at the there, sidelines watching. willing to slap every inch of Frieza's gold-plated shit should he threaten the god's never-ending buffet called Earth. He's also yeah. basically there to make the same food jokes over and over, and it honestly gets old. That being said, Beerus hmm? and Whis are phenomenal characters who expanded the lore of the franchise, brought Dragon Ball animation back in a big way, and both offer great complex possibilities for the franchise. So they're just like eating food together. They're just food buddies. More with that. Who wants some champagne? Anyone? 
No? Okay. So now we're gonna have the fourth one, right? Four. Yeah. So this will be like the last one for this video, right? Yes, perfect. Okay. <laughs> Our time oh, traveling voice. robot bug man has finally arrived, and with him really? three whole forms to review and critique. From his insidious entrance to his climactic okay. defeat, this villain made one I'm of the biggest impacts on the franchise, both in terms of influence and length. Who's going to be top three? I think it's going to be Vegeta, the and taking up Frieza, at least ten percent of the one. entire story. He easily cements his spot in the top four. But we know what you're thinking. How is the brilliant bioengineered baddie below the top three? Well, let's first talk about Cell's inception. Remember Kazuhiko Todeshima, the guy essentially responsible for Cell's creation? Don't tell me yeah. he whined about Cell's design too, did he? Yep. No! Well, oh. uh, not he Todeshima. Decide. In fact, this time it was Toriyama's then current editor, Yu Kondo. Quote Kondo upon his initial exposure to Cell's first form, he looks ugly. Which was of course hideous. He, transform. he ate so the cigarettes. So Toriyama hurried Cell's transformation into his second form, to which Yu Kondo Super then replied... Cell. This time he looks like a moron, doesn't he? Hurry up and make him into his perfect form. Executive yeah, perfect meddling, cell. everyone, for better or for worse. Toriyama had actually wanted the I react to Home Frame for and Cell versus by Double Artemis. But the evolution does grace us expediently with his final form that, honestly, is the most iconic of the three. While the horror film aesthetic of his original form is memorable, and his second form is definitely... Unique. His perfect form is tall, intimidating, and definitely stands out from the previous villains. While still retaining yeah. aspects of his previous I love forms it. in a way that all comes together <laughs> perfectly. Unlike Frieza, who I can love change his forms at will, so Cell's parasitic evolution requires the sacrifice of others. In his first form, like he wipes androids. cities clean of their inhabitants with no remorse, all to level. add to his own personal power, and to gain perfection, he literally consumes and removes the previous villains of the Ark, leaving him the lone unstoppable essence of evil that would force Gohan to come into his own. His impact yeah. on the characters would certainly be a huge point for him. Goku is urged oh, to run to the sun. Gohan forward. is pushed to new heights that would finally bring him into the true role as hero. The death of Trunks awakens the first true inklings of compassion within Vegeta. Yeah, Vegeta being a father. The between Piccolo and his former self, Kami, is finally closed in order to combat this threat. Man, Not to mention, this is the That's first time be... in the history of the series that Goku gives up. Not loses and comes back, but flat out tosses in the towel, leaving Gohan to take up the mantle. Of course, this is with full belief that Gohan will overcome Cell. But for the average viewer, it's utterly shocking to see their hero actually accept defeat. But something you might notice here yeah. is that we've not talked much about his personality. And that's where the cracks in his perfection start to show. Nobody can deny well, like his initial bridge. appearance against Piccolo is dripping with dread and menace. And his insidious nature is on full display throughout the arc. I'm trying to show Kirby. One impossible situation Dragon Ball Z the bridge. Next. I'm Only showing her Helsing right now. Almost every from the one of our heroes. She's never seen the bridge. But when it comes to anyway. his motivations and characteristics, nothing really sticks out when he's lined up next to the plethora of big bads that preceded him. Big it's almost bads. as if the whole shtick of him being made up of other character cells works against him. As his final form nearly feels like a carbon copy of Frieza, without his patronizing and bit. condescending dialogue and penchant for torture. The Saiyan part of him is a will-used device to help with the creation of the Cell games, and his ability to use other people's techniques does come in handy a couple of Which times. Which, st everybody but stole everybody's story, techniques in the show. The of others' DNA and abilities doesn't really make him all that much more unique. He does sort of feel more like an obstacle to overcome by the end of the story, rather than Do his own... Do you think Gohan only have one arm However, for this? it's definitely worth mentioning that the actors in the English and Japanese version of the anime, who give him spectacular performances that, much like Frieza, are as much a part of his character as his concept and writing. I like Takahata doing it. Clark's evolving cadence and tone leading to a smarmy, pompous, but threatening perfect cell, and Norio Wakamoto's monstrous depth, texture, and delivery that brings an incomparable presence throughout each form. They're perfect picks, you could say. <laughs> and the father son Kamehameha and the transformation of Super so happy. Saiyan 2 are monumental moments that ranked high on our first D December list. And the transformation is perfect form, so many Vegeta's times. final flash, Goku's sacrifice. You just have so many fantastic scenes and moments to pull from that you can thank, at least partially, to sell. Also, even the most vitriolic of Bruce Faulkner's haters <laughs> Kaiser, agree that the music he created for Cell was at the very least all right and catchy. To summarize, All while right. Cell's personality may not be exceptionally unique and stand out in comparison number four. to his peers, he's still got a charisma that cannot be denied, and was a conduit for change and growth for every character around him, making for a classic and also he had Cell Jr. arc. Huh. Well, so that is Cell. Let me see if there's a pattern here, because 
No, no, because no. It's not the the one that's on the cover is the first one they said. Frieza has to be number one. It has to be number one. Either Frieza there, there's a character I obviously don't know, or I'm just completely skipping that's in the top three, but I'm pretty sure Vegeta's gonna be one. And um and Frieza. Frieza and Vegeta are gonna be in there. I'm one hundred percent sure. If Piccolo was one, Vegeta definitely counts as one. I don't know who else though. It must be a character I'm not familiar with, or one that was covered in Dragon Ball Z Bridge. Like I said, I'm showing my best friend Kirby, who's an exotic dancer. I'm showing her Helsing Ultimate Bridge right now. The first video actually just went live. Let me actually check how that video is doing right now. I'm sure it's doing... Okay, uh, really? I thought it'd be doing better. It's doing pretty well, but... <laughs> it's gonna do amazing. I'm so looking forward to showing her more episodes. It's her very first Bridge series. I'm trying to convince her to watch Dragon Ball Z Bridge. She's seen a couple like episodes of Dragon Ball Z, and she's just kind of like, it's too slow, nothing happens. I'm like, trust me, the bridge is way better. Trust me, people that... Oh, I'm, I'm not going to say it's like way better. It's just really, really good. But next week, we'll be back with the top three, and then we'll probably do the Super Dragon Ball Super Villains bonus episode, and then we'll get into more DB Simber. These videos are going to be coming out, so I hope that you're subscribed so you don't miss future videos. Leave some comments down below, because I read every single one of them and reply to a lot of them. And if you want the videos day early, check out the Patreon and allow me to do these videos. So I hope you have a great, wonderful rest of the day. Hopefully I made it better. But until next video, take care and keep the music. We were